Hey everyone, today's lesson is adding integers and we're going to be using positive and negative counters to help us visualize what the problems are. So if you have your lesson worksheet, take that out so that you have it in front of you. And if not, then just grab a piece of paper and a pencil and you can copy some examples down as we go through them. Okay, so here's our problem. We're gonna find each sum, right? We've got four problems up there with positive and negative numbers. And when we go through and we solve our problems, we're gonna be doing them by using counters, right? Positive and negative counters. And those are like those little two-sided chips that you've seen in school. Um, sometimes they're like white on one side and red on the other, or yellow on one side and red on the other. But that's really helpful when you're learning your rules of integers. All right, so let's get started. Our first problem that we're gonna do is negative six plus positive six. Now, we're gonna start out by drawing counters, right? This is step one. We're gonna draw counters to represent the problem. And we're gonna use red for our negative counters and we're gonna use black for our positive counters. So if I have negative six, that means that I've got six negatives. So I'm gonna draw six red counters. And then if I'm adding a positive six to that, I'm gonna draw six positive counters right underneath. And then we're gonna see how many pairs we can cancel out, right? So remember that whenever you have a positive one plus a negative one, right, that's gonna cancel out. Positive one plus negative one just equals zero. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for pairs of positive counters and negative counters, right? One positive and one negative would cancel out. So if I go back to my problem, I'm gonna see how many pairs of counters I can cancel out. Well, here's a negative and a positive, so I can cancel that. A negative and a positive, negative and a positive, right? You're just gonna go through, cancel out as many pairs of negatives and positives as you can. And we can see that everything was canceled, right? And that makes sense because if I have a negative six and a positive six, those are opposites, and opposites just cancel each other out, right? If I have $6 and then you take $6 from me, then I've got nothing, right? So the answer to this is going to be zero, right? Nothing's left. Everything canceled. All right, let's look at our next example. This time we've got a negative 5, and we're going to add a negative 3 to that. So I'm going to use red for my negatives. So I've got five negatives, right? Here's my negative 5. And then I've got three more negatives, here we go. And then again, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna see, is there anything that can cancel out? Well, I don't have any pairs of positives and negatives because I don't have any positives in this problem. All I have is a bunch of negatives, right? A big bunch of negatives. So my answer to this problem is negative eight. Okay, our next example, we've got a positive seven plus a negative four. Hey, I've got seven positive counters. I'm going to draw them. And then I've got four negatives this time. So I'm going to draw four negative counters. And we're going to see how many pairs of counters we can cancel out, right? How many positive ones plus negative ones do we have? Well, I've got one pair, two pair, three, four. And this time I've got some extras, right? I'm left with these right here. I'm left with three positives. So my answer to this problem is positive three. For my last example, we have a positive eight plus a negative 10. So I'm gonna draw eight positive counters. And then I'm gonna draw 10 negative counters. and we're gonna see how many pairs of positives and negatives we can cancel. Well, I can cancel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pair. And this time, I'm left with two negatives. So my answer is negative two. Now, of course, there are rules, right? And as we're adding integers, when we're adding positive and negative numbers, Hopefully you get to the point where you can kind of think about these counters mentally, 
right? And you can look at a problem and maybe think to yourself, all right, I've got this many positives and this many negatives and how many would cancel and what am I left with, right? So the rules are when you have the same sign, right? So if we look, for example, at our second, our second problem right here, the negative five plus the negative three, we had integers that had the same sign. They're both negative. Whenever you have integers that are the same sign and you're adding them together, you're simply going to add those numbers. So you're going to add the numbers and you're just going to keep the sign. If we're adding two positive numbers together, like positive 3 plus positive 4, then we get positive 7. If I'm adding two negatives together, like negative 3 plus negative 4, I'm going to get negative 7, right? Because if you're just adding two negatives, you end up with a big old pile of negatives, just like we did in our second example here with negative 5 plus negative 3. Now, when you have different signs, if we look at these last, these second, um, the last two examples we did, a positive 7 and a negative 4, we had a positive number and a negative number. And somehow we ended up with a 3. And then in the last example, we had an 8 and a 10, and we ended up with some kind of 2. Well, what I'm doing here is I'm actually subtracting the numbers, right? So the first thing you do when you have different signs is you subtract the numbers. And then as far as the sign is concerned, you're going to keep the sign of the bigger number, right? The number that has the larger magnitude or the larger absolute value. So we're going to say keep the sign of, I'm going to say the bigger number, but that really means the one with the larger absolute value, right? What did we have more of to start out with? So if I've got a positive 7 and a negative 4, I subtract them and get 3. And since I had more positives to begin with, right, 7's a bigger number than 4, my answer ends up being a positive 3. For this last example, when I had an 8 and a negative 10, I subtract. 10 minus 8 is 2. And since 10 is a bigger number than 8 and 10 is a negative, I end up with a negative 2. So those are the two rules. Okay, if we look at the problems on the bottom, now it's your turn, right? So you are going to go through and you're going to add these together and you can draw counters if you want to and cross out the positives and negatives or if you want to use the rules, right, you can do that. Remember, if you're adding integers that are the same sign, you're going to add the numbers and keep the sign. If you're adding numbers that are different signs, you're going to subtract the two numbers and then you're going to keep the sign of the bigger number, right? Keep the sign of the number with the larger absolute value. Okay, so why don't you stop the video right here and see if you can solve these nine problems and then turn the video back on when you're finished and I'll go through the answers with you. Okay, so hopefully you were able to solve these problems. Let's go through and I'm just going to do the answers for you. For the first one, we have a negative 5 plus a negative 7, right? That means I'd be drawing five red counters here and seven more red counters here. I would have a big old pile of negative counters, right? Nothing will cancel because I don't have any positives in this problem. All I have are negatives. If I use the rule, I would say that I'm going to add the numbers, 5 plus 7 is 12, and then I'm going to keep the sign, right? They were both negative, so negative 12. For number 2, I've got a positive 11 and a negative 2, so let's think about that. I would have 11 positive counters. I would have two negative counters. I'd be able to cancel out two pairs of counters, and I would be left with nine positives when I do that. If I use the rule, I would say a positive and a negative, right, means I'm going to subtract the numbers. 11 minus 2 is 9, and then I keep the sign of the bigger number. Positive 11 was bigger than 2, right? 11 is a, a larger absolute value than 2 is, so it's going to end up being positive 9. For number 3, I've got a positive 7 and a negative 12, different signs, right? We're going to subtract the numbers and get 5. The bigger number is the negative 12, so my answer will be negative 5, right? Because 12 has a larger absolute value. 
Number 4, we've got a positive 15 and a negative 4. We're going to subtract those numbers and get 11. 15 is a larger absolute value than negative 4, and 15 was a positive number, so my answer will be positive 11. Number 5, a lot of people get this one wrong and say 0, right? But if we have a negative 6 and another negative 6, that means I've got 6 red counters and 6 more red counters. Nothing cancels, right? It's just negative 12. For number six, different signs again. So we're going to subtract 20 minus 7 is 13. The number with the larger absolute value is the 20. And since 20 was a negative number, we're going to end up with a negative 13. Now, 7, 8, and 9, we've got um, more than two numbers that we're adding. But that's okay. We can just go from left to right. So if I do a negative 2 plus a positive 6, I'm going to take it one step at a time. That's going to give me a positive 4. Right, because we're going to subtract them, keep the sign of the bigger number. And then I'll bring this down. Now if I'm adding a positive 4 plus a negative 4, positive 4 plus negative 4, different signs, we subtract them. That gives us 0. Everything cancels. If I were to draw this out, I would have 4 positives and 4 negatives, and everything would cancel. So it would just be 0. For number 8, let's go left to right. So 8 plus negative 9 is negative 1. Subtract and keep the sign of the bigger number. Bring down that plus 13. A negative 1 plus a positive 13 means that I would have one negative counter. I would have 13 positive counters. I'd be able to cancel out just one pair, and I would be left with 12 positives. Right? Or we can think of our rule. Subtract the numbers. 13 minus 1 is 12 keep the sign of the bigger number. So it's going to be positive. All right, then we've got this one over here. So we can go from left to right. And another thing I want to mention is you don't have to go from left to right. You can add these numbers in whatever order you want to, right? Whatever order makes sense because it's just an addition problem. We can use our commutative property. So if it's easier for you to maybe add all the negatives first, right? That's something that you could do. So if I wanted to start out maybe by adding my negative 19 and my negative 1, right, that's just going to be negative 20. And then I've got five more negatives, right? So maybe I want to start out this time by adding all of my negatives together. The negative 19 and the negative 1 and the negative 5 is negative 25. And then I'll just add that positive 6 on the end. Different signs, so we subtract and get 19. The number with a larger absolute value is the 25, so our answer will turn out to be negative. Right? So you don't have to necessarily go from left to right. That's completely up to you. Another thing that's kind of interesting about this one that you may have noticed, I'm going to erase this, do it one more time. If I were to look at these numbers, right, I've got a positive 6 right here, and then I've got a negative 1 plus a negative 5 over here. Well, wouldn't that negative 1 plus negative 5 be negative 6? So maybe I would start out by adding these two first. And that would leave me with a negative 19 plus a positive 6 plus a negative 6. So this positive 6 and negative 6 just cancel out, right? Because a positive and a negative just equals 0. And again, we're left with negative 19. Right, so you can group them. You can move them around and you can add them in a different order if that makes it easier or makes more sense to you. Okay, so hopefully you are good with adding integers using counters and then also using the rules. Um, if you're confused, you should go back and watch the video again. And if you're still confused, you should reach out to a friend or your teacher. Like I always tell you, we love when you ask questions. We are here to help. So I uh, hope you did a great job on this. I'll see you next time.